Uh, hi, I'm going to talk about Canoe, which you've heard about in other talks. People are using it as an assembler um, for their nanopore data, but I'm just going to give a little bit of background. Uh, and then for more detailed algorithms and questions, you can come and talk to me at the poster. Um, so Canoe, it's a hierarchical assembler. So what does that mean? Uh, we basically overlap the raw data. We improve the raw data, then we assemble this improved data. Um, this is actually quite fast. We've optimized this a lot since the first version. And so you can actually do this in multiple rounds, which is important for uh, noisy data. Uh, Canoe was originally designed to scale to large genomes. So there's essentially three tools you could use for nanopore data, uh, mini ASM, uh, Canoe, or SPADES, which requires Illumina data plus Minion data. The other two work with just a Minion data. Uh, and Canoe is the only one that can run on a human genome today. If you had a human genome, whoever has the Promethion, talk to me. Um, <laughs> So uh, we generated chromosome scale uh, contigs from pack biodata that are over 20, K, uh, 20 megabase pair and 50, and we can do the same uh, from nanopore data. Uh, Canoe is the fastest assembler to get a high quality nanopore only assembly, uh, and Canoe plus Illumina data provides the highest accuracy assembly. Um, and we can actually use 1D data, and this is not the R9 1D data. Uh, actually, the R7 1D data is sufficient for a high quality assembly as well. Um, so the first thing we tested is nanopore only assembly. So we used Canoe and we used mini ASM. Uh, one thing to note here is you can't see the assembly time on this graph, so it's somewhere down here. Uh, the dominant time is generating the high quality consensus uh, from nanopolish, and the Canoe time is about 10 times faster than the nanopolish time. Uh, they both get to about the same quality, so this is about 99.82% identity, which is similar to what Jared Simpson mentioned yesterday. But uh, Canoe is a lot faster because the identity output from the assembly step is much higher than mini ASM, so it's much harder to get it to the same level of quality. If you instead use Illumina data, so you can either now you add Spades, which runs with Illumina data first and then adds the nanopore data on top. Uh, and now you can see that mini ASM assembly time is still very fast, uh, whereas Canoe and Spades spend most of the time in assembly. Uh, but here we can get to over QV50 with uh, nanopore plus Illumina data, which is higher than any of the other assemblers. And actually, mini ASM gets stuck uh, at about the same QV as the nanopore only data because it introduces errors since it does a very rough pass assembly. It's very hard to correct those kinds of errors with Illumina data. You can imagine if I collapse a 300 base pair tandem and I have 100 base pair Illumina read, it's going to be really hard to figure out how to put that together and how many copies I actually have. Uh, so we thought that was easy. Bacterial genomes are borderline routine with minion sequencing now. Uh, and I think with R9, they will become routine. So we wanted to look at 1D data. So we took the same E. coli data set, but only the template 1D data and assembled it. Uh, and you can get a five contig assembly with a almost one meg N50. Uh, with some optimization, you can actually get this to two contigs, uh, where the largest one is three and a half megabase pairs. Uh, and if you combine it with Illumina data, you get up to the same 99.8% QV. So actually you get a higher QV from the 1D data plus Illumina from Canoe than you do from mini ASM from 2D data plus Illumina. Uh, and then we wanted to try a larger genome. So we took a yeast genome. This is actually a very old data set. It has 1D and 2D data uh, from R6, R7, and R7.3. So this is spanning uh, the initial release of the Minion program. And you can assemble it into about 40 contigs. Uh, and the majority of chromosomes are in two contigs or less. And actually, with newer chemistries and R9, I would expect that almost all the chromosomes will be in one contig without any algorithm changes. Um, so the last point there, and the question we get a lot is, when should I use a hybrid assembler like Spades? And when should I use an assembler that relies on just nanopore data alone? Um, and so we wanted to look at that. So uh, we took an Arabidopsis pack bio sample because we, didn't have, we wanted to do a large genome, and we didn't have a large genome with uh, Minion. Um, and so we ran uh, downsampling from 10x up to 150x. So you can think of this as a um, basically our, a rock curve for assembly. So you want to be higher up here. So the green line at the top is the reference. So that's as good as you can do. If you're above that line, then you're introducing misassembly by merging chromosomes. Um, and you can see that Canoe gains very quickly from 10x down here, where you get about 80% of the reference. But you can assemble 10x of data. Um, and then jumps to 20x to 50x. By 50x, you've saturated the assembly, and you can't really improve it very much. Uh, the remaining gaps at, between this and the reference are the centromeres. And so unfortunately, at, no matter what coverage you get with packed biodata, you don't have reads long enough to span the centromere. Maybe if we start getting 200 and 300,000 base reads, we can. Uh, but the thing to note is that when you run a hybrid assembler like Spades, it has a very rapid gain 
in the yellow line from alumina to alumina plus 10x. Uh, but then there's almost no gain from 10x to 150x. And you can see that uh, spades 100x alumina plus 150x pack bio is about the same as canoe at 20x. So this is an assembly with 10 times more data and about the same continuity. Uh, just because it's so hard once you build an initial Illumina graph to fix it. Uh, and with that, I'll end it. I'll say all our software is open source and available on GitHub if you have any questions. <laughs>